Hello, welcome back to the Game Blocks tutorials. This tutorial looks at cartoon animation. So, uh, what we're going to do is I already have um, costumes for all of these different sprites that we can use to animate. If you look at the character here, I just drew a little smile on him. You just you have to squint, I guess, but the smile gets bigger and bigger frame by frame. So we have smile one through five. Uh, flag is similar, it has uh, various frames of the flag animation. Uh, these are stars twinkling in the sky and a car here. So let's uh, start with a simple example. We'll just make this character smile. So we'll do some of the things that you typically do uh, at the start of a level. Let's uh, actually let's just set him to this, his starting costume. So we'll switch to costume. Smile one. Get him started correctly. And what we're going to do, a lot like the physics engine, the cartoon engine requires a cartoon object to be constructed in the background. And it'll handle all requests for changing which sequence of um, anima uh, of frames to play, or you know, changing the algorithm used to show the frames. So we'll need to create that, and then we'll be talking to it um, from here on out. Um, I guess the place to start. Um, we actually I already have these defined, so I'll just go ahead and use them. Um, there's something here called cartoon loop. Notice it's a local variable, so it's it's below this line. So when you made it, when you make it, you would say for this sprite only, type in cartoon loop. And what that does is creates a, a loop and a variable variable pointing to it associated just with the sprite. So each sprite that has cartoon animation has its own loop. So we'll do a set function to set the cartoon loop to and we'll get the command to create a cartoon loop. Cartoons make a cartoon loop. So that will do that. Now the idea of a cartoon animation is that um, you know, typically in a game you have a character with a lot of different cycles of of uh, images. So you have a run cycle or a idle cycle where the character might just be standing there. You might have the character swing a sword. So each of those is a sequence of images and we want to have a system that can take a sequence of images and do one of three things with it. Play it in order and stop. So just a swing of a sword. We want to be able to loop uh, those images, so that's going to be this flag in the background. I believe we just have it looping, so it'll just play the same images over and over. Um, or we want it to um, randomly pick an image, and that's what these stars will do. We'll just randomly pick an image every frame, so they'll it'll look uh, kind of dynamic and uh, and random. So um, that's what we're going to do. We've uh, we've already gotten halfway there by creating our cartoon loop. Um, so what we're going to do, we need to define those lists. So we're going to set, we have quite a few variables here. Uh, we've got the cartoon loop, but we also have flag wave cartoon. So that's this cartoon, it's a series of images. Uh, and we have a smile cartoon and smile reverse cartoon. So we're going to define these. Right now they're just empty variables, they're just names. But we will set them to that, um, those sequences I was talking about. So to create one of those sequences, we're going to create a smile sequence. So we use this list constructor. So down here, we're in the variables section. Down here, the second half is all list operations. We grab this one right here. And this um, basically puts several values in one place. So we're just going to do smile one. You can make it bigger by pressing this arrow. Smile two. Three. All right, so that's our smile. And there's a trick we can use to make the second one easier to do. Oh, you know what? I should be setting the cartoon to yield to that smile cartoon. And we'll set smile reverse cartoon to. And there's actually a list operation we can use to uh, get the reverse list. This is one of the commands that comes in the BYOB tools um, 
project. So that is also included within the, the game blocks library, so you should have that by default. Um, so we're going to reverse this list, and we don't want to duplicate that. A clean way to do it would be to grab the cartoon smile, the smile cartoon. So there we go. We should have two cartoons. Now we just need to play those at a certain time. So what I'm going to do, just you know, for organization purposes, just uh, launch a different piece of code. We'll just broadcast an event and um, why is it not already here? I think I guess because I deleted it. All right, so we're, we'll say um, smile animations. We'll just send a message, and that's just going to start this next piece of code. I just wanted this in a separate spot. So we just want to loop forever, smiling, pausing for a minute, and stopping the smile, and smiling again. So we'll just put a forever loop here. Why can't I ever find these? There it is up higher. A forever loop, and we'll just grab some conversation. No, that's conversation. Some cartoon commands. We're going to tell a, our loop, and that's what this, this tell means, tell our cartoon loop to loop or to play. Uh, we're just going to play and then we give it a rate, so this is what we need. What is this? And wait. Play at a rate and wait. I think we want to play at a rate and wait, don't we? Because I think the other one might just fire the animation off and, and not uh, have the script pause. So let's see if this is what we want. So we're going to tell, first of all, the cartoon loop. Tell the loop to play this list. So we're going to play the smile cartoon uh, at that rate, and we'll wait for it to finish. Then, after that, we will do the same thing. Instead of the smile cartoon, we'll do the smile reverse. Uh, wrong spot. And wait, and let's just put some pauses between those. Okay. Let's wait a second here. I want two seconds and three seconds. All right, all right. So that should play our cartoons. Let's see if it works. There you go. You can see he's smiling. We'll wait, wait about three seconds and he'll reverse the smile. So there we go. So we're looping here, playing our cartoons, referring to them with a handy variable. Um, that's one set of commands. So now we will look at the loop command. So this is playing the sequence one time and it's waiting for it to end. So this is unfolding like a cutscene. If we didn't use the one that had and wait at the end, uh, it would just have fired it right away and uh, that could be useful in some situations like swinging a sword then you want to play a sound effect afterward you would just want to maybe fire off the animation and have it play once um, so that's that let's do the flag now so for the flag what we're going to do just for kicks let's just move this down below Let's just, we'll, we'll pretend like we're trying to do something more sophisticated like a cutscene where you want to talk to different sprites. Um, we'll just talk to the flag for now, but we'll do it from this current sprite that we're in just to demonstrate that we can send these cartoon commands anywhere and have multiple characters playing animations at once from within one script where you can keep an eye on everything. So we'll grab some special commands from down here. This is from the Game Blocks toolkit and we'll run, not launch on sprite. Launch will fire these commands in the background and immediately return and let the script continue. We want to run on the sprite. So we're going to run on the flag, run some commands on it. So this will actually run these commands and wait for them to finish, which would let you continue on with a kind of a sequential cutscene. So we need to grab a special thing here to um, it's called a sensor, I guess, but it lets us pick an object out of the world. So this thing here, I think I've shown this in other tutorials, you would expect to be able to grab a sprite like this and drop them in there, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, 
to run on an object, you need to tell, tell it it's an object and pull it down from the list. So we're going to run on the flag sprite, the cartoon flag. So that's the name of the name of this sprite here. So we're going to tell that sprite to um, run a looped animation. So we're going to do something similar to this. Uh, we're going to set some variables. And you know what we're going to do? This is a, a funny trick. We're going to set a cartoon loop. You know, we're going to do it inside of here. Though. We're going to set a cartoon loop to making a cartoon loop. Um, now you would think this would be a scary thing to do because we're using our same variable here to set to this cartoon loop. But because we're running in the context of this other sprite, what's going to happen is this is going to create this local variable over there. If it doesn't exist, the you know BYOB will create it automatically. This has nothing to do with our sprite here. So we can just use all the same names here if we want and keep coding and it'll all happen somewhere else. So we're not messing with our current code. Uh, but we do need to uh, set a different variable for the flag cartoon. That's what we'll use here. We'll use the flag wave cartoon. And it's a little sloppy having this in two places, but it's not going to really harm anything. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a list for that animation. And it's creatively named um, flag wave. So Alright, we only have um, we have five of these two. Okay. Alright, so now I've knocked this out of the slot. Alright, so now we've got that ready to go. And at this point, the only thing left to do is to start the animation and tell it to loop. So we're going to tell our loop to or tell our cartoon loop to loop this animation. Um, so we want to get yeah. This is the this is quite interesting. That this actually works, but we can grab it from here. And because we're running in the context of the sprite, we can actually use the same variable name. And we're going to loop the flag wave cartoon. At that right. Now let's see how it looks. Uh, we need to actually run this though when we get the event. Alright, this is why does it say handle car controls? Okay, I don't know how that it's set that way, but we can just, you know what, catch that same event. It's a little sloppy, but we'll just go ahead and trigger this when uh, the smile animations start. So again, when we kick off the animations, we'll run on this other sprite, the same commands to create a cartoon loop, make the flag wave uh, indefinitely, and, and that, will do, that will be it. So notice this executed, it lit up, now it, and it quit. That's because it created this loop. It's running in the background somewhere. It told the loop what to do with this. It basically set some parameters and it didn't need to keep running. So um, this, notice this command didn't say tell it to loop and wait. So um, it's, it's the command deliberately does you know, kicks off an infinite process so there's really no reason to wait for it. Um, so that's why this one quit. And that is that. The only other thing to show is, is making a, a random animation. And as you can imagine, the process is about the same. So we'll go here. The start. We'll set up some variables. Same one for the cartoon loop. And uh, let's just grab a couple more. At least one more. Let's go get. Am I getting, getting the making a cartoon loop? 
So now we have a cartoon loop here. We're going to set the twinkle cartoon to, let's look at our costume names, star one, two, three. So we'll create a list. Star one. Star two. Alright, start three. And then the command we want is play random or randomize. Uh, tell our cartoon loop to randomize the twinkle cartoon. We can set whatever rate. This rate is the number of milliseconds, or it's number of seconds, I guess, between each frame. So you can make it faster or slower that way. There we go. We see one of our stars randomly changing frames. Flag is waving and he's smiling all at their own rate. And you'll notice we have a car here. If you use the arrow keys, this car will drive around. And it's switching animations on the fly based on these keys. Now, I'm not going to step through this um, uh, block by block. I, I don't know if you'd get a lot out of it. and It would be a little tedious. But let's look at the script for that real quick. It's using the commands we just looked at basically loop as well as um, actually it's using loop exclusively so it just switches the loop that's playing if you, you notice when it's idling it's the smoke's coming out so that's a loop um, when it's driving it's got flames so it's always in a loop state so it makes it look alive and you switch those out just like you switch out a single costume right uh, so there's some you know mumbo jumbo here which is maybe a little hard to parse at first glance uh, but you'll notice up here it's the same stuff we saw before we cre we're creating a cartoon loop setting a bunch of lists uh, for the different animation states and each of these is a loop so stopped loop for looking left and right the driving loop left and right so it's four different loops and then based on what the player is pressing if he's pressing the right arrow and we're not moving to the right already we set our variable saying we're moving to the right and we um, tell the cartoon loop to start looping the right uh, movement animation. Uh, and we just repeat that logic throughout. We just basically check every key that could be pressed. It's just two, right, left and right. If we don't have any luck finding a key being pressed, then we fall back to um, basically idle. And based on which direction we were going previously, we either do the idle for left or idle for right. Um, so, you know, a uh, little bit of complexity there but not not too bad so the, essentially the, the idea is whatever interactions you have in a game you can uh, make a higher you know fidelity or more lively state for a character or entity in the world by creating these lists and referring to them by name so you have a, a simple way to, to kick off a command to, to swap out the state of something and, and have it be animating so I think with that that concludes the overview of cartoons. I guess the last thing to look at might be stop. There's a cartoon stop, right? Um, why are there two? There probably shouldn't be two. I think this is probably one. I think we actually, this is probably the newer one. If, there's, if there really are two in the toolkit, I'll remove one of them. Um, so to stop this one, naturally we would put the loop in here. And let's see if this actually works. See if we can stop the car. The car is driving. Yep, you stop. So there's a command to stop the engine too. If there wasn't, it'd be hard to figure out where that code is to, to get at it. It's kind of just running in the background. So there needs to be a command to, to stop it when you, you're ready. If you have a lot of sprites in your game, you'll want to manage this. you want to turn these engines off and off, off and on. Otherwise, they'll start to eat up. CPU cycles, I think. All right, that's it for cartoons. Okay, one advanced topic for the cartoon blocks. Uh, I mentioned that you want to manage these loops so that you only have the ones you need running uh, at any given time. So if you have a game with a lot of locations and sprites animating in each location, you want to turn off the loops that you're not using and then turn them back on when you get back. So what's the best way to do this? 
Uh, I've shown the stop command. So you see we're inside the car now, so and it's got exhaust coming out of it. If we run stop, it stops right in mid-animation. Uh, the best way to um, bring a loop back, you know, once you've turned it off, is to just set a new loop. You know, set the variable to a new cartoon loop, and then you can use the commands like you would normally. And there we go, we're back in business. And um, I'm not exactly sure how memory management works in BYOB. In a, a managed language like Java, then our old loop would get destroyed at some point. Um, I, I don't think there will be a big issue with memory with the uh, amount of memory this, these blocks would likely need. Um, so this is probably all you want to worry about. Stop it, set a new loop, and then start doing the commands uh, just like you would. You can use the same commands you have in your code because you'll still be using the same variable to point to them. Now, if for some reason you discover there are uh, performance issues with that, you decide you want to keep the same loop, there's a way to do it. It's just a little bit funky. Um, so you would use this internal command um, to run the same loop again. This is a, because it's all caps, it means it's meant to be used just by the game blocks library itself, not by, a, you know, an end user. But you can use it if you, if you want to try to experiment with this. There's just one strange thing about it. Um, so you can rerun your same loop after you stop it. But this loop has actually been told to die. So it's going to just die instantly when you try to run it again. So we stop it. This actually sets a flag inside the loop saying die as soon as you can. And that's what the loop does. It will die when it can. When it, when it can. And so if you run in this, it will run the loop, but it will die immediately because it has that flag set. So if you're going to use this, um, you're going to want to run a command like this first to put the loop in a diff different state, telling it to animate um, in place. And then you run this, and then it runs just fine. And you notice that this keeps running. It keeps lit up when uh, the cartoon loop is in a healthy state. And it keeps doing that until cartoon loop, cartoon loop stops, and then the, the loop stops. So to uh, reenact the loop this way, to kind of reenact the same loop, you're going to want to set it to some healthy state, and then run the loop. And so you don't have your script block. What you would want to do is just launch that that run loop block in the background, and you do that with this launch command. This is just a standard BYOB block that lets you run things. Uh, essentially in the background. So that's our magic sauce there to uh, reuse the same loop. Again, I wouldn't use this unless you really find some reason why you think you've got to keep the same loop. Um, I just reset it to a new one, but those are those are the two ways you can manage these loops when you get into the realm of having a big game and, and performance concerns.